Well, good morning. Francis here with the uh, Texas Roadrunner channel. Now I have another problem, which I want to turn into a problem tunity. Um, follow me outside, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let me open her up. <clears throat> now, I'm willing to bet a lot of you outdoor recreation folks have the same problem. I can't get to anything. I don't know where anything is anymore. So it's time to organize. Let's go back in and I'll tell you my idea. And oh, by the way, it does not help at all when you have so much stuff in your garage. That's part of my problem. I can barely get one vehicle in here. So let's talk about it. Okay, we're back. Um, when I was at the one of the hardware stores, I think this was the Home Depot. Yeah, the Home Depot. I found this. It's one of those um, command products. They uh, have all kinds of different hangers that you, you know, stick on the wall with this this uh, adhesive stuff, or you know, just about anything. Usually for kitchen items that you use and bathroom items. So I was thinking about putting these on the inside of my truck cap on both sides and maybe the middle and of course the back. Now you're probably wondering, okay, uh, how are you gonna attach them? Well, I'm not going to bolt them down, that's for sure. So I do have, which I neglected to bring in, um, some epoxy. So I just want to epoxy here, then put it in place and uh, kind of tape it down, let it dry over a day. Then after that's done, <clears throat> this is a this is a folding chair. You may have seen in one of those unboxings from Bass Pro Shop. But this, like many other chairs and tents and other kinds of uh, outdoor equipment, have these um, straps that you can put over your shoulder and carry it wherever you need to go. So I was going to use these carbiners or S beaners to simply. Um, Attach here. I may need to uh, do two or three to hold something this heavy down, but then I get it off the floor and up so I can put more gear in there. Uh, I shouldn't say that. Uh, just organize it better. So that's my plan. I'm not going to waste your time for you watching me unload all this stuff. So the next time you see me, I will have moved all that gear into the garage. Okay, everything is out of the truck now. The next big step, yeah, I'm going to probably clean out the bed, obviously, but I need to clean the top of the uh, truck cap, too, because when I um, epoxy those D-links in there, they need to have a clean surface. This is all the stuff that I had in the back of my truck. I can't believe I had all this stuff in there. Let's hope when I put it back in, it's fairly organized. I swept out the back of the bed the best I could, and uh, we don't have any more uh, isopropyl alcohol in our town. Yes, we can get toilet paper, but no isopropyl alcohol. So I'm gonna try to use this uh, paint thinner to help clean it along with these uh, old rags over here. So again, all I'm doing is um, scrubbing this area where I'm going to epoxy those D-rings. That simple. Okay, I'm finished with the um, cleaning, but as you can see, 
due to how they formed the fiberglass uh, material to some mold there's a lot of um, texture here so hopefully you know maybe I'll hopefully that epoxy will uh, take that into account maybe even make a stronger bond who knows now the next step to this process is to measure out and mark on the uh, ceiling of the truck cap um, where I'm going to epoxy these D rings so quite a few of them if I need more I can always run back to the Home Depot so right now we are losing our light so I'm gonna go ahead and pick this project back up uh, tomorrow morning see you then one final thought um, after mounting these D rings I'm thinking about trying to hang some kind of light source like a flashlight and give me some illumination when I'm pulling stuff out at night um, I think I'll sleep on it and figure something out well good morning it's the uh, next day and uh, of course we have a very very cloudy sky not a lot of light this morning so anyway we're going to uh, pick up where we left off so the next step like I said last night was to um, uh, mark where I'm gonna place those D rings and I'm not gonna go through all the marking procedures I'm just gonna um, or I'm not gonna show it to you um, just to save time so once I'm done I'll go ahead and um, uh, share okay, that with you. I have um, marked my um, areas where I want to glue down as you can see where you see all the X's yeah, I screwed up all my measurements because, uh, and I'm, and it doesn't have to be exact, but you know, good enough, I guess. So the next step is gluing these D rings. And I'm gonna score the bottom to help with the adhesion process. Maybe I'll just use an old hacksaw blade. Oh, you remember last night when I was talking about trying to find a way to light up the. Um, the cab, um, not the cab, but the, uh, well, this area inside. I put this dealing really close to there at the edge of the window and did the same thing over here. I want to try to hang some little lanterns there. And we'll see how As it goes As you can tonight. see, I have scored the bottom of the D-ring with uh, some box cutters. And that should aid in the adhesion process. One down and a whole lot more to go. Okay, one side, the left side, is done. Now I have the uh, right side done. Okay, I finally did the back. And as you can see, I did two for the top or of the roof. And I'm missing three more. So... Um, I went back to Home Depot. They didn't have any more, or our local Home Depot. So when I'm out and about, you know, during work and I'm closer to Houston, I'll, uh, uh, you know, check out some of those Home Depot stores and get these d -mines. Now, my back is killing me right now. So while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm just going to take a break, okay? And um, then we'll go from there. Well, the epoxy is still curing, but, you know, they say it's like five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Well, I really doubt that. I'm gonna not do anything heavy duty with them until a little later. However, these are the little Coleman um, lanterns for, for camping or whatever. They're pretty lightweight and I'll probably try to use some of these S binders or S carbiners to um, um, connect them. Let me go ahead and connect them and I'll bring you back. Okay, there's one lantern up. And here's the other. Sorry about the uh, noise from my neighbor mowing. Tonight we'll come back and we'll check them out further. Okay, unfortunately we are losing our light so I'm going to have to call it quits for now. But later on, when it does get dark, We'll test out these uh, little mini camping lights or camping lanterns and see how bright it gets on the inside of the uh, the truck bed and the 
the truck uh, top. And then we'll uh, hang some gear on here and drop around and see if it actually holds or not. So here's the bed of the truck with the those two little uh, um, camping lanterns. And I think it could be lit up even better if I move them maybe right here and right here that way um, the light wouldn't be um, blocked by some of this gear that you see all right well tomorrow morning we'll see if all this yeah by the way I did start hanging up some gear and um, we'll see if it stays up in the morning and then we'll test it out by making a well a semi long drive and I'll put the camera inside and uh, we'll see if uh, everything holds it's uh, not, it's obviously nighttime now, and it's time to hang up this project for the night. Well, good morning. You might say this is day three of this project, but let's go outside and see if some of that gear stayed up overnight. And then after that, we'll uh, go on the road for a bit, you know, 30 minute drive on a variety of roads and uh, see if anything falls down. Meet me outside. Well, it looks like everything held throughout the night except this fishing backpack. And I had a feeling it would have some problems because I used a different type of epoxy on this one. And, oh yeah, this D-Link too. So I'm gonna go back to the store and buy the right stuff and do a quick repair. But before I do that, let me drive around and see how it holds up during um, travel. Okay, let's drive around, see how these uh, D-rings in the back uh, can handle the streets. I'll try to take it off on some rough roads too. I do have a, a camera, that brand new camera, a GoPro, um, in the back just to film what's gonna happen if something happens, right? Or just see how things uh, uh, stay put. So, join me on the road. Bastrop Bayou uh, fishing area out here on the government land and it looks like the government did a really nice job of uh, uh, putting up a pier here. I've been here a couple of times you may have seen it on some uh, previous videos but anyway let's go back and uh, check out if those D-rings uh, held up because you know I did uh, drive out here intentionally to drive on that Caliche road that you saw and it has lots of ruts in it and of course when coming down over here um, into the fishing area, I saw a bunch of potholes in the parking lot and I intentionally drove through them. So um, let's, let's check out the back real quick. Well, it looks like everything held up just fine. Except for the two D-rings that I had some uh, bad epoxy. 
How's my camera doing? All right, she's doing fine. But, okay, uh, well, let's go on home. Hemorama view of the bayou. And I thought I saw a herring over here. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. There he is. Okay, let's head on home. Alright, we're back home now, so let's check the back of the truck again and uh, see how much more gear we can pop Oh, in. by the way, on the way home, I did uh, purchase, went back to Walmart and purchased the uh, correct uh, uh, JB Weld plastic binder epoxy that I need to fix those two D lenses. I don't know why I purchased that other epoxy. Maybe it just got in the middle of the stuff that I wanted to buy, you know, by accident and I just picked up a handful. I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, let's see how much more junk we can put in there, okay? Because I gotta get the car in the garage soon. Okay, I'm starting to make a dent. Now I'm using this garbage bag to uh, hold my oars and other um, accessories for my kayak that I used in that kayak modification project. But the rest of the stuff, I think I'll just store in the uh, garage somewhere right somewhere uh, because I really don't need to be I already have uh, two lawn chairs in there and this fishing rod and reel set can probably be moved over here in the corner with these other ones and these fishing um, tackle well backpack and box and another box I'll probably find some room up here and that way I will be fully organized in here with room to spare you know like an ice chest and other goodies now these two uh, Orvis um, rod and reel holders I plan to hang them from the ceiling right here where I, when I get some more D rings of course I'm gonna fix these two D rings up here as you saw earlier, I bought the correct epoxy, and then I'm gonna move these two um, camping lanterns further over here, so um, they're, the light is not obstructed by the gear. Now I think it's time to uh, go inside and do a review. I guess I could put some of that gear in our storage shed that's ready to fall down. In fact, the uh, roof, is being kept down by these bricks. Okay, one last thing. The uh, marine battery for my trawler motor, and maybe I can do something with this, the uh, trickle um, I charger. plan to bungee tie it to this D-ring on the truck. And maybe I can use that trickle charger somehow or another and keep it in here and keep that battery charged up all the time i guess that's a new project right there now i can get the car in the garage okay i'm back let's do a recap on this project again the whole premise of this whole thing was to uh number one make things more organized and easier to get to because if you saw those initial uh video or photos that uh back to that <laughs> The back of that uh, truck bed was just uh, atrocious, right? And you saw how it all piled up in the uh, garage floor there. So, you know, the only thing I have left is to uh, uh, do three more D-rings in the middle ceiling and then repair those two on the right-hand side. And it should be a completed project. As, as you saw, it held up very well, uh, you know, on, um, residential streets, the highway system, 
and uh, some cleachy roads that had a lot of ruts in them. I was hoping that if anything fell, it would be falling on these ruts in that uh, cleachy road that I took you on. And as you saw from the video, on the inside of the bed, everything held tight. So I'm going to call this project completed and uh, well worth it. And so until next time, guys, y'all be safe out there and take care. I'm Francis Kiefel and I approved this video.